The following is a production of Learfield Sports. Two games, two wins for Coach Greg Gard and the Wisconsin Badgers on Sunday afternoon at the Kohl Center. The Badgers put on a late rally in the final 30 seconds. They did pass to Michigan State and on Thursday night at Penn State, the Badgers build a 17 point lead in the second half and hold off a late Nittany Lions run en route to a 66 to 60 victory. We'll recap those two games with head coach Greg Gard. We'll also hear from Alex Illikanen. Freshman shift in big, especially in the first half of Thursday's game at Penn State. All of that coming up on today's edition of the Badger Sports Report. Who is looking, shuffles right, puts it inbounds to Harris, being hounded by Iverson, trying to get a trap with Happ. Anthony stepped out of bounds. He did. Yes, sir. Turnover, Michigan State. Up to his left near the sideline with 15 seconds. Off a double screen to his right. Hooks a pass to Happ. Low on the right. One pump. Low on the left. Up and in. Badgers lead by one. 10 seconds left. Here comes Valentine with seven. Badgers lead 77-76 with five seconds. Valentine left of the circle. Up, no good. Rebound tipped in the air. Costello up, no. Game over, game over. The Badgers win it. 77 to 76. Throwing to, hit to uh, Brown at the top. Shot clock at eight. Showalter driving. Left-hand dribble down the lane. Flips it up. Left hand. Got it. It counts and a foul. Wow, what a drive by Zach Showalter. There's Nigel Hayes at the top of the circle throwing to Vito Brown. Vito angles a pass to Koenig, open three, right pocket, got it. Bronson Koenig from distance, another Novo Nordisk three-pointer. Right hedge by Julian Moore. Koenig is doubled, five to shoot. Hayes is open for three, left side, good. Nigel Hayes from downtown. This is Wisconsin basketball. Ten seconds left for that. They spread the floor. Kane against Tate. Six seconds. Kane drives the lane. Up and in. Nigel Hayes from distance with the right side. They will return to the final four. They are standing here at the Cole Center for Badgers head coach Greg Gard. Showwater down the lane. Way up good. The Badger Sports Report with Greg Gard is brought to you by Charter Communications. By the Dairy Farm Families of Wisconsin, the Wisconsin Milk Marketing Board. By Quick Trip. By Zimbrick Buick GMC. By hy V. And by UW Health a cornerstone partner of Wisconsin Athletics. Brutal blizzard this weekend. Other polar vortex coming. Snowpocalypse. Winter is here. Are you ready? No matter what winter throws at you, you can power through it. Nissan's family of crossovers with intuitive all-wheel drive. Bring on winter. For a limited time, choose 0% financing for up to 36 months or get a $199 per month lease on the 2016 Nissan Rogue. Get to Nissan, proud partner of the Wisconsin Badgers. Some call it a miracle. Others call it science. But for those who've needed a kidney transplant like Kelly Krager, they simply call it a new lease on life. For nearly five decades, UW Health and the University of Wisconsin have been national leaders in the field of kidney transplant, providing a new life for recipients and assuring a normal life for living donors. Miracle? Science? Maybe it's a little bit of both. UW Health. Remarkable. I grew up on a family dairy farm. I as well grew up on a dairy farm. At the time, we didn't appreciate growing up on the farm. The baby calves, that was where my passion was. I found it and I knew that I wanted to keep pursuing a lifestyle or a career in taking care of the young ones. There's been a, a Norman Rockwell image of dairy farming that's been painted for a lot of people. And if they see past that and they see all the different aspects of what the farm really provides, I think they'll be hooked. Game night. That magical weekly gathering where lands are conquered and you get trapped in the dungeon that is your bedroom. But you've got blazing fast spectrum internet, so Kevin and his friends have enough bandwidth to play together, and you have enough left over to find a new apartment. Get 60 megabits of dragon slaying speed with spectrum internet. 
Where will it take you? Looking, finds Hayes near the left corner. Hayes on the drive, goes up and around it, and it counts, and a foul. Grown man move from Nigel Hayes. He'll step to the foul line. No game for the Badgers this weekend, coming off the Thursday victory at Penn State. Next up, Indiana, Tuesday night here at the Kohl Center, but it was a good week last week for Coach Guard and the Badgers with the wins against Michigan State and Thursday night at Penn State. Let's uh, let's go to Thursday night's game first. We know the, the record says that the Badgers have the, they've traveled well, period, but especially to State College, also says it's never easy. So I guess you weren't surprised. Uh, you know, you guys were up double digits, but you were saying it to your guys all week. Those guys will fight you all the way, and your guys right. are able to hold them it off. It seems like every year we go there, we have something like that happen. And that's a credit to Penn State, obviously. They keep continuing to battle, and um, we open the door a little bit for them to, to make a run back at us with not converting at the free throw line and around the rim and a couple of miscommunications defensively, but credit to our guys to stick with it and be able to finish that out and, and close it up. Yeah, including Ethan Hat, because it, you know, you, you're exactly right. You look at the totals of free throw percentage, you know, low 60s, but Ethan makes four of his last five and they were, they were going to target him because it, it had been a little up and down. But again, you see the growth of somebody, pressure free throws, he was able to deliver for you. Yeah, and I, I contemplated you know, juggling going offense, defense with a couple guys, but I liked the way he handled pressure, uh, his ability to pass, his ability to handle the ball, and then defensive rebounding I think was huge, and he got some big ones there down the stretch. Yeah, his seventh double-double of the season. No one in the Big Ten has any more, as a matter of fact, but had to be very encouraging, I would think, Greg, especially in the first half, but maybe throughout the course of the game, but especially in the first half to have players not named Hayes and Koenig who were picking up the scoring, Hap and Alex Illikanen really providing yeah, a Yeah, the two, uh, two freshmen. As I mentioned, three of those four front line guys are freshmen. So for Alex to come in and be able to uh, play as he did, and he's, he has a poise about him, he has a calmness about him, especially against zone, which I thought was important to try to get him into the mix early. And, uh, you know, he has a great feel. I joke that he can't jump over a Grand Rapids phone book, but he has a nose for the ball and he knows how to find it. Absolutely. It's funny, you mentioned a freshman. You've talked about using your bench. You've continued to do that. You have lineups out there. You might have either a red shirt or three true freshmen, a red shirt sophomore in Jordan Hill, and then, you know, maybe Koenig or Hayes. But again, it's the you're backing it up, right? Be ready. If you're not ready, be ready. And yeah, you're showing and it I, again. I did it again that night too with Jordan Smith getting <laughs> yeah. in there for a little bit when I wanted to get uh, in a little more uh, solidify the backcourt a little bit better. And um, you know he's been doing some good things in practice, so I wanted to give him a chance to get in there. And we needed some help at that particular time. All right, Badger sitting at three and four now in league play and getting getting the second conference win against Michigan State. It was electric here at the Cole Center. Obviously, I know you're kind of locked into your guys, but imagine you notice the the atmosphere and, and just to be able to be able to finish and make big plays and again we start with Ethan in the end kind of starting at the end I guess able to play through the contact literally getting kicked in the backside but able to gather the ball and finish that's uh, again another sign of the growth of him. It, it definitely it? is and definitely made a good catch on it Bronson obviously made a good read and, and waited long enough for him to come open on that as he rolled to the basket and, and then found him and obviously him having the poise to keep his balance and not travel and as he was getting bumped, dumped, bumped and shoved as we talked about um, to be able to finish that was that was huge. Just amazing through the years we mentioned it before the game the classic games that Wisconsin and Michigan State have had and it's easy to say that I guess when you know the team you want to win wins the case of the Badgers but it just seems like more often than not Wisconsin Michigan State games go right down to the wire don't they? Yeah it, it appears that way we've had a ton of them that's yeah. for sure I think you have two programs that are very similar in terms of how they try to play defensively, what's important to them on the interior of their program, and obviously two that have been doing, and two programs that have withstood the test of time for a very long time. And in the, in the ball game, we mentioned in the, the Penn State game, you didn't necessarily need Hayes and Koenig all the time, but they certainly were big in the game against Michigan State. And then, you know, Khalil Iverson, in, in a couple of the games in the previous week, he comes in, specific role against the press, that's where that strength and athleticism really comes yeah, into play. Yeah, he likes that when I put the press on. He is <laughs> eager to jump in there, and he did a great job of setting that trap right in front of our bench and, uh, you know, Ethan to close the other side of it. And then just to credit two of our guys of how they handled that situation, 
because we took the timeout, which was our last one, and then be able to set two different scenarios based if we had to foul and how many we were down, what set we were going to go to, and obviously we didn't have to go to plan B. We were able to get the turnover and, and then go to the ball screen like we did there at the end. Indiana coming in on Tuesday, a team you saw very recently. Everybody in, in the, if it's TV, radio, newspapers, whatever, they talk about adjustments teams make game one to game two. Is that overdone? I mean, are there things that you can tweak or Indiana traditionally can tweak when you play each other in a fairly short time span like this? There'll be little things. Not, not, it won't be drastic. I'm sure they'll have a few things they'll look at, as we will too, as we look through the film from the last game, then also follow their games up to this point. Um, but it'll be more about ourselves. You know, I, thinking back to that last game, that game at Indiana, we left a lot of points in the paint that we didn't convert. We left some points at the free throw line. So we uh, have to be able to work to be able to get in those positions again and hopefully finish it off this time. Final one for you. There are some gaps in the schedule here. You get the Thursday game against Penn State. You don't play again until Tuesday. And then after Tuesday, it's Sunday. A little extra space. Good time for that right now. I mean, you have guys playing a lot of minutes and still... You know, as you get ready for the second half of the Big Ten push, maybe if you can't control how the schedule lays out, but maybe right. this is a pretty good thing the way it does. It, it is, and I've tried to use those days. And obviously, we took Friday off, um, and we'll we'll do some things on Saturday, but not quite as long, and and uh, rest the guys. Maybe they've been a little have had more miles or a little banged up, and use those days. Usually, that th if we have three days to prepare for a team, use one of those three days to really work on ourselves and try to do an individual improvement and a team improvement. Uh, segment and then prepare for the next two days before the next game. All right, that next game is on Tuesday night, a 6 o'clock tip against the Indiana Hoosiers right here at the Kohl Center. Look forward to it. And then on Sunday night, the Badgers will be down in Champaign taking on Illinois. Coach Gard returns in a few minutes with the Great Dane Great Question of the Week as the Badgers Sports Report continues. Taylor with 3.9 seconds to play. He'll launch it for three at the horn. He got it. They're going to the final four. He'll hoist one up. He put it. Don't wake him up! Taylor's on fire! January 5th, 2005. Mackey Arena in West Lafayette, Indiana, a place the Badgers had lost to Purdue 29 straight times. Long distance shooting was the name of this game. Reach Chandler's for three in the lead, left side, got it. Sharif, nothing but net. The Badgers shot 64% from behind the arc, landing 14 threes and building a double-digit second-half lead. Orlando feeds Hanson. Left open is Morley for three, and he nails it again. Zach Morley led the way, going six for eight from deep, 22 points overall, helping the Badgers end the long dry streak at Mackey Arena. Morley on the left side, another three, a deep three, and he sticks it again, nothing but net. Knew it as soon as he snapped it off. And for the first time since the Nixon administration, the Wisconsin Badgers have beaten Purdue in West Lafayette. Car paint, think it's developing nations on the grid? Working together, our discoveries are greater. Boundless together. Subatomic particles that hold the universe's biggest secrets. Working together, our discoveries are greater. Boundless together. Bronson Koenig high on the left with six seconds. Koenig, he gets doubled. It's out of traffic, feeds Illa Koenig, fakes the three, takes the three, left side, book it at the buzzer. Alex Hillikanen with a three. The people here have really made it easy for me to transition into college, um, from academics to coaching to just being here with a couple other freshmen that are in the same situation as me. So it's been a lot of fun, but um, just learning the roles and stuff in basketball and transitioning into a college classroom um, was pretty tough. As we've gone along, we've seen you gaining even more and more and more minutes. Yeah. Is that kind of a, a nice reward? You come in here, you work every day in practice, and to see your minutes increasing on the court, that's got to feel fulfilling, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, coming in as a freshman, I was like, okay, maybe I'm going to get the five minutes a game where they'll put me in to rest some guys or just kind of be in there to fill a gap and try to contribute in those minutes. But the coaches are really fair. It doesn't matter how old you are. If you compete and you can contribute, you're going to play. So if you do the right things, if you play defense and all that kind of stuff, you'll play. Just uh, having the older guys be confident in me um, really helps too. 
because coming in I was a little nervous and didn't want to shoot, didn't want to do all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, they're just telling me keep shooting because if you shoot and make it, it makes it easy for us. So, I mean, they're, they're really confident in me. Especially in the Purdue game, you had some pretty significant minutes and you uh, had some pretty significant baskets. How much did that game do for your growth and confidence? I think that just reassured me that I can do this. I was starting to get a little unsure if I should be playing more, if I, I'm good where I am, but um, that would just kind of boosted my confidence and reassured me that I can do this. I, I should be in there and um, I can contribute. Who are some of the older guys on the team that you've looked to for advice? It goes from Jordan Hill gives me tips all the time about things in his area of the game that he, he knows and Nigel all the time in the game and Vito Bronson. Um, everyone's really giving me tips and it's really nice to get everyone's point of view on it and not just hearing it from the same person every time. So um, pretty much everyone has been uh, telling me and helping me out. As a true freshman, you're not only acclimating to playing college basketball, but you have to learn all the off the court kind of stuff about being in college as well. What are some of the exciting things about being in college and maybe some of the challenging things? Some of the exciting things is just meeting new people. You go into a classroom and there's 300 people in there. And I know you're never going to meet them all, but you're going to meet some and meet your friends and maybe be friends for the rest of your life. And it's just a cool atmosphere, especially being at a Big Ten school where it's a, a bigger school and the football games are huge and fun to go to and all that kind of stuff. The school spirit is like amazing. And then some of the challenges are just keeping up with everything, especially being an athlete, just studying and all that kind of stuff is just, you want to just put it on the back burner because you want to go to practice and not have to deal with it, but really you have to either get it done before or just always be focusing on it. So it's pretty tough, tough to juggle it all. What do you see your role on this team? I see my role as being a defensive rebounder, defending a, a post or a guy that is strong inside that likes to fight because I like to go after him too. But also just hitting open, open jump shots and just being a strong guy that people can rely on. Some goals for me is just I got I to gotta put in extra work and um, just be the best I can be for this year. When the team relies on me to go in there and get stops and do that, I got to do that. So goals for me is just, um, just contribute as much as I can. Don't be the freshman that doesn't know what to do. Just be uh, tough, strong, and contribute. Zimbrick GMC is known for outstanding customer service. At GMC's full line of hardworking trucks, crossovers, and SUVs, you've got a winning combination. Whether you need the powerful and efficient Sierra, the technology and comfort of the Acadia, or the modern style and space of the terrain, you can't go wrong with Zimbrick and GMC. During our New Year's celebration, lease the 2016 GMC Acadia for only $269 per month. Find your next vehicle today at Zimbrick GMC. Fresh Daily. It's as much about what we do at your neighborhood Quick Trip Fresh Market as what you want to do for your family. So now you can pick up everything on your list, from the fresh milk, bread, and produce you've always known us for, to even more healthy veggies, premium meats, flavorful sides, and you bet, desserts. Stop in for bananas, baking potatoes, or jumbo onions for just 38 cents a pound every day at your neighborhood Quick Trip Fresh Market. See you next time. Three Band-Aids. Two Band-Aids. Three Band-Aids. At UW Health, we specialize in performing the most complex of procedures through the smallest of incisions. These minimally invasive surgeries mean our patients heal faster, scar less, and are back to their lives that much sooner. One Band-Aid. UW Health. Remarkable. There's really only one steak place that has the best steak. The most tender, most flavorful, mouth-watering steak. A place that makes the choice to serve you the best choice. Because we believe there really is no other choice. hy V Choice Reserve. Premium, hand-selected, 100% natural beef. hy V Choice Reserve. Because our choice is your best choice. Think about it. Brought to you by UW Health, a cornerstone partner of Wisconsin Athletics.
I'd say Matt Ferris. Uh, smart kid, really intelligent. Um, he would he would probably build a shelter, gather some food, make a fire, do all the right things. So I think he's a yeah he's a smart kid. He's a little weird. I don't know if I like him all the time, but you know he'd survive. He'd survive on the island. Matt Ferris, very very smart, very smart man. He could figure it out. He, He'd probably make a boat out of the trees or something and get out of there, so definitely Matt Ferris. <laughs> Vito. I think, yeah, Vito, definitely, without a doubt. Alex. <laughs> I feel Alex would be the survivor. Me. I live in northern Minnesota, and I go hunting, fishing, all that kind of stuff, camping, so I would definitely put me over in that category because a lot of people are, I know, Chuck likes to fish and do that kind of stuff, but everyone else, I think I'd survive the longest. Probably me, you know. I know how to survive out here. It's a rough world out here, guys. If you ever need any tips on how to survive, come to me, I know. Me, for sure. I watch a lot of shows like that. I watch like Survivor and like some National Geographic Discovery Channel type stuff. Could live for probably 10 years. I might actually do that on purpose. I might try to go to an island and try to survive. Not Smith. Uh, <laughs> I, I might say Nigel. Yeah, I, I might say Nigel. Just matter of fact, Mesh. Mesh is really good at coming up with really weird ways to do things and like just little like MacGyver type of stuff. So I could see Mesh lasting for a few months on a deserted island. You kind of have to go with Aaron Mesh. He uh, he uh, as the best sandwich maker on the team. I think. Uh, he knows how to, you know, fend for himself, and I think he'll be able to survive. Ooh, Aaron Mace, he's always, he's resourceful. He's always finding ways to get food, and that kid eats more than anyone I know. So that might be a, a downfall for him on a deserted island, but he'll, he'll find food and he'll be resourceful. Aaron Mace, you know, sometimes I don't know what goes through his head on random day-to-day -day activities, but, you know, the guy is so unorthodox that he would find a way to survive. He's versatile and I think he understands that his wardrobe right now consists of, you know, cut off sweatpants and a lot of pajama pants. So I think he'd do fine without, you know, having all the first class amenities that we do. He just looks like he's been living on an island for about three years. Game night. That magical weekly gathering where lands are conquered and you get trapped in the dungeon that is your bedroom. But you've got blazing fast spectrum internet, so Kevin and his friends have enough bandwidth to play together, and you have enough left over to find a new apartment. Get 60 megabits of dragon slaying speed with spectrum internet. Where will it take you? Zimbrick GMC is known for outstanding customer service. At GMC's full line of hardworking trucks, crossovers, and SUVs, you've got a winning combination. Whether you need the powerful and efficient Sierra, the technology and comfort of the Acadia, or the modern style and space of the terrain, you can't go wrong with Zimbrick and GMC. During our New Year's celebration, lease the 2016 GMC Acadia for only $269 per month. Find your next vehicle today at Zimbrick GMC. At Quick Trip, we're always thinking about what it means to be a neighborhood fresh market. That's why we've brought in even more new groceries to keep your day fresh. From premium meats to the kinds of veggies, sides, and fresh fruit your family wants, making it easier than ever to enjoy a home-cooked meal all in one place. Right now, Kitchen Cravings Ground Chuck for only $2.99 a pound. Premium meats at your neighborhood Quick Trip fresh market. See you next time. Whether you're out there training for a big event or you're just trying to stay in shape, I have a bit of advice. It's important to remember that what happens after the workout is just as important as what happens during the workout. My advice, be sure to refuel with low-fat chocolate milk. It has the perfect mixture of protein, carbs, and electrolytes to help you refuel, rehydrate, and build muscle. In Wisconsin, athletes win with low-fat chocolate milk. And you can too. To learn more, visit winwithchocolatemilk.com. The Badger Sports Report with Greg Gard is brought to you by Charter Communications. By the Dairy Farm Families of Wisconsin, the Wisconsin Milk Marketing Board. By Quick Trip. By Zimbrick Buick GMC. By Hy-Vee. 
and by UW Health, a cornerstone partner of Wisconsin Athletics. Time for this week's Great Day and Great Question of the Week, and we check in with Mitch in Menominee Falls. Wants to know, Coach, uh, what are the roles of your assistants during a game? Well, to keep me in line, for one, make sure I don't get out of, out of whack. Do you have a get back, Coach? <laughs> yeah, it's been, it's been okay. The officials have done a couple of those. They've saved me a couple of times. But, uh, you know, Coach Close, Coach Moore, and Coach Paris always rotate the scouts. So one of those is always in tune with what the opponent is doing. I don't have any of those three with a chart, um, but they're always pointing out some different things. And uh, then I have AJ doing our possessions, who is our video coordinator, and I'm always in tune with him on turnovers and timeouts and, and what we are in different points of the game, how many points in the last 10 possessions, different questions, I'll throw out him like that. Uh, Kat, our director of operations, she handles the opponent's possessions, which is basically the mirror of what AJ is doing for the opponent. And then Mark, one of our administrative assistants, Mark Van, Van de Wettering, um, handles the uh, shot chart. So that's always something I, I really glance at that at, at halftime more so than anything else. So they all have a prominent role and obviously uh, very helpful helpful as we go through the game. Yep, all stars, especially Cad Vosters now, director of operations, the feature now. Yeah, Hollywood. On the journey. Hollywood I, know. Yeah. I just hope she remembers us little people yes. at some point. Uh, Mitch, we thank you a lot for your question. The Great Dane with four locations in Madison, east side of town, downtown, Fitchburg, as well as Hilldale. Coach Guard's radio show at the Hilldale location starts at 6 o'clock central time. We're going an hour earlier for the rest of the season, 6 o'clock. Monday night at the Great Dane Hilldale for Coast Guard's radio show. And of course, there's the Great Dane up in Wausau as well. Indiana here at the Cole Center on Tuesday night for a 6 o'clock tip at the Cole Center. And then on Sunday evening, the Badgers travel to Champaign to take on the Illinois. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks for watching. In order to perform procedures others cannot perform, we sometimes need to look where others cannot look, to see what others cannot see, which is exactly why the American Family Children's Hospital created the most technologically advanced imaging pavilion in the country. You see, better imaging for our pediatric specialists means better outcomes for our patients. Just ask Madison. UW Health. Remarkable. what winter throws at you, you can power through it. Nissan's family of crossovers with intuitive all-wheel drive. Bring on winter. For a limited time, choose 0% financing for up to 36 months or get a $199 per month lease on the 2016 Nissan Rogue. Get to Nissan, proud partner of the Wisconsin Badgers.